How's it guys? It's Michelle. Welcome to Heartbeats. This week we're going to be talking to JD from JD Custom. He's a luthier and for people who don't know what a luthier is, it's a person who basically makes instruments. You know, we'll get into that later, but I know you're going to love it. When did you first fall in love with guitars? Um, I've always had a, a, a passion for that. I think from a young age I've always had a fascination mm. towards musical instruments in general. Yeah. And um, uh, in high school that's where the whole music vibe started. Okay. Where I started listening to a lot of heavy metal through friends of mine. And yeah, yeah. Then that turned into becoming, uh, you know, like turned into a band playing with friends. Yeah, yeah. And then eventually learning how to play and, you know, getting good at it eventually. Yeah, yeah, it takes yeah. time. Yeah. So that's pretty much where it all started, is in the school days. Okay. Um, I think the initiation to that was probably in Biscuits. <laughs> oh, cool, yeah. Yeah, yeah I and like John it. Otto and the drums, because I started. So, John Otto, uh, Biscuits drummer, that's, mm. that was my fascination when I was a teenager. Mm. And uh, yeah, so I wanted to play drums like that. So. Yeah. Did you ever actually get into drums? Yes, I played for seven years. Really? Okay, yeah, cool. I'm, I'm terrible now. I haven't played for many years. So. Okay, yeah. But it's like riding a bicycle. You always You'll remember, yeah. Know you know. A bit, yeah. yeah. And then get the touch back. <laughs> you know? So then when did you actually decide or that you wanted to make a guitar? You know, what about it said, you know, I'd like to give that a shot? Well, um, you know, after the band days, after leaving the band, I've always used to fiddle around on my father's instruments, you know, so he had a, a little classical guitar. Mm. I used to noodle around and uh, what, what basically happened is um, when he passed away, I got his instrument and it was in horrible condition. Okay. That's right. So I decided, okay, let me, let me get it back to life and in his memory do a little oh. bit of an art design on it. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah, because I've always been into art and painting and things mm. like that. So, And then that's just what triggered the spark. So from mm. from that, you know, I decided this is actually what I want to do. So I went through quite a rough stage after he passed away. Yeah. And it was definitely not natural. That's my dad, so I know exactly uh, okay, what you're yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, he wasn't sick or anything. It was a much more violent uh, ending. So. Mm. After that, uh, working with his guitar, you know, like uh, I went through a bit of a sabbatical and dropped everything I was doing I had to clear my mind, work on on my own stuff, mm. and and that's what triggered the spark. So um, I I decided actually this is what I want to do. I want to work with musical instruments and specifically the guitar. Yeah, man. Yeah. So the initial idea was to do a bit of artworks on them, and you know, with the little knowledge that I had. I tried a few little projects on my own. Yeah. And then I decided I wanted to pursue a career in luthery. And luthery is, uh, for those who don't know, the art of guitar of making guitar or making, instrument making, yeah. Or the speciality mm. towards strung instruments. Mm, mm. So that's uh, what I did. I went to Andy McGibbon and I did a three year apprenticeship with him. Mm. And that was the beginning of, of this long journey that's just been fascinating from A to Yeah, man. To eventually Z, you know? Yeah. yeah. Can you explain the first guitar you made that you actually just did from scratch and what it felt like to actually play it for the first time? Uh, the, the first one I did was an electric guitar. It's a, a Les Paul. It's got a dragon on it. Mm. Um, I, I did a lot of that in my own time while doing my apprenticeship. Yeah, it's like your project on the That's side. right, yeah, because yeah. I do solid instruments. I don't really build acoustic guitars. Okay, um, yeah. I'm not fantastic experience. Uh, a lot of a lot of things to learn during during all the steps of the way. Mm. A lot of challenges and speed bumps on the way that um, you know you you have to sit back and think about. And okay, now are we sitting? putting the neck towards the body yeah. and gluing it at the right angle and the finishing the finishing is something that's is I think the toughest structurally I've always had a, a mechanical mind yeah um, finishing on, an, on another level is is actually a, a chemistry thing so mm -hmm. there's a lot of challenges <laughs> then even, yeah. even today there's a lot of challenges that's that I have to overcome you know when you 
try different clear coats or the priming procedures on the wood. Yeah, all that. Um, you know, reactions that go wrong, things like that. Have you ever had a mess up and had to start all over again? Many times. <laughs> I'm many, sure. Many times, you yeah. just finished it and go, <laughs> oh my god. Many times. Yeah. <laughs> you know, my career now is very driven towards uh, repairs, maintenance. Yeah. That's that's what. Uh, that's what makes the clock tick, you know, mm. what brings money into the account. So, um, I would say that's a lot more challenging than building an instrument from scratch because you are working with something that's already been made. You are trying to find ways to get it back to normal. And uh, boo boos happen, you know, all the time. So, yeah, I've and just. You're with someone else's baby, you know? Yeah, and that's right. But also, you know, sometimes they've got uh, different types of clear coats that don't react to the same thing. You've got to find out which ones are the ones you're going to use and your paint supplier, when you change your paint supplier, you've got to make sure that you find the same quality. Yeah. So it can happen that, uh, you know, like the way that we work in our workshop now is we, we do batches. So with batches, you know, you start a procedure like a broken headstock, for example, you're going yeah. to glue five of them or ten of them, sand them down, polyfill them, do all your color coating, then your clear coating. And at the last step of your procedure, your, your clear coat starts bubbling, doing pinholes. You have to start again. Oh you have God. to start again the on whole line. five or ten of them or however many you're doing. So these are things that, that do happen. But, you know, but I think with, with time, with experience, uh, there are problems that you you know, you start having seen before. Yeah, you can catch it. That's right. Okay, okay, right, I know what to do at least. And That's what right. wood is actually the best for a guitar? Which woods do you recommend? Uh, there's so many different woods that have different purposes. Which you one know? do you love the most? I love the one that I've got on, on my on my baby, which is my Taylor. Yeah? Um, I think Tasmanian blackwood looks beautiful. Oh my yeah, God. That's right. Jeepers, yeah. Sitka spruce. It depends what the instrument is. So mm. an electric guitar likes a mahogany body, a rosewood fingerboard, a maple cap. That's like a typical Les Paul type of um, instrument or anything else. Mm. Like a Strat, for example, or like a full mahogany or maybe an ashwood with a maple neck, a complete maple neck. Uh, these are the electric instruments. Yeah. Um, you know, also, I mean, there's always a blend between rosewood and maple cut into sections through the whole neck. Yeah. That's, that's nice on electric guitars. Acoustic guitars typically also, you know, mahogany sides and back, but you'll find that the top is made out of Sitka spruce. Hmm. So spruce is known to resonate quite nicely against the bracing system. Ah. That's right. And then also, hmm. um, you know, you'll find flamenco players will play with uh, cedar tops. So cedar tops are dark in color, more punchy. Mm. Uh, there's, there's, there's a whole blend, um, you know, of yeah, woods that yeah, can be used. Yeah, we just talking about wood, just like it. Well, that, wood, that wood, is, wood is a whole other wood. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. How long does it actually take to make a guitar from scratch? It you depends how much time you're going to put towards it. You know? Okay, so, so, and also your expertise, I guess. Yeah, like if you're just well, starting out, it might take a little bit longer, yeah, you know? But. That's right. I mean, I know, for example, the Tele Guitar Factory, they make like a, 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 a thousand guitars a day, a thousand yeah, high end yeah, guitars a day, geez, but they've got a production a line, yeah. they've got yeah. CNC cutting machines. A luthier can spend a year on an instrument mm. easily, easily. Yeah. If that was all I was doing all day, I'd probably finish a guitar in about three months. Mm, yeah. Something like that. Yeah, full time. If yeah. I'm working eight hours a day on it, I can, I would say, comfortably finish a guitar in that time from beginning to end. Yeah. Um, That's cool, man. But making a guitar is something that I do for the love of it and not for the economical side of things. Because so it's, it's <laughs> two just months time of your time is. And you know? it's, it's not economically viable unless you're going to make a batch of like 50 guitars, which is not what I'm about at the moment. At yeah. the moment, I'm building my business to get to that point eventually where I can focus on building guitars and my team will be doing everything that I'm doing currently. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's, that is my long-term dream is to have a production um, workshop yeah. that builds guitars, like a custom shop. I, th I think, yeah, that all, all instruments have a heart and a soul, they, they all come from a piece of wood mm. that has had a heart and a soul. Yeah. And uh, it's, there's something funny is that, you know, whether it's a table or um, a guitar or anything that's been crafted with wood, the first instinct that a, a person will have 
when they see it and that it's beautiful is to touch it. Mm. Um, it's quite interesting. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. People are very tactile. Yeah. They are, but mm. especially when it's wood, it's it's one of those weird things. Mm. And uh, yeah, definitely, I, f- I find you know in, even instruments that are mass produced will have uh, you know a soul, um, but something that's handmade really. You can feel like an energy coming out of it. Yeah. Uh, where is the magic in music for you, in general? Like, where do you really find your bliss in music? The magic in music is that I can be on this side of the world and I can um, have someone on the other side of the world that I've never met appreciate the same thing. Hmm, yeah. So, if that we like listen to that's yeah. right it's like a universal language so yeah. we could not speak the same language but we could understand each other with what we listen to yeah you know? and i think that um music is also it gets you into a place where it's it like into a different dimension if, if i might say yeah so you could be living a certain type of life but when you close your eyes and you listen to um, a piece of music that's beautiful you get into another dimension mm-hmm. and you and I might not know each other or speak the same language if we both close our eyes and listen to that piece we get to the same dimension you know like I wish I understood music a lot more because ah, they, yeah. it's, it's just very complex and there's some geniuses in this world that have that have thank God shown us you know what we can appreciate with that. Yeah, they've it's, taken us to that. It's dimension. absolutely fascinating. Yeah. It's like I was born into this world and I, I see six strings on a guitar and the way that they're tuned and all these fets. And this is like a, a progression of knowledge and an accumulation of all these things then put together. And now there's this instrument that's still up to today with 10 years of experience fixing them. I still don't understand exactly what is going on. Wow, that's pretty cool. I like yeah. that. Well, that's what keeps it fun, you know, if you yeah. don't totally understand it, you're still learning and that's what keeps it interesting. Otherwise, I think it would be boring. I think so. And I think if I can tell you that I understand the guitar at 100%, then I'm very arrogant and, mm. you know, I, I would say until the day I die, there's always something that I'm going to have to learn. It keeps surprising you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that's the beauty of art. Yeah, yeah that's, totally. that's magnificent. Mm. Yeah. What is your dream instrument that you would like to make? Or do you think you've already made it? No, well, no, I haven't. Um, I think I would like to be able to, to build an acoustic guitar mm. um, on the same level as Taylor guitars or Martin. Oh, wow. I think that's, that's yeah, that's... There's, there's also ma- magnificent instruments that are made in South Africa. Mm. I'll give you examples. There's Kasimi guitars, there's Mark Mangard, there's Mervyn Davis. Mm. And these, these are instruments that are outside normality in the way that they are made. They're not mm. like your typical instruments that would be then mass produced. Like cookie cutter, you know. And that's right. Mm. Each instrument talks in its own way and is made in with different types of wood, different structures. So I would like to get to that point. It's just right now my time, <laughs> yeah. and my focus, you know. Yeah, yeah, right yeah. now I've got priorities towards a direction that I'm taking. And then, you know, when I, when it starts working on its own and I can take a step back, that's when I will take another phase towards what I'm doing. And that would be then construction mm. from beginning to end. My biggest passion in musical instruments and guitars is acoustic guitars uh, more than electric guitars because I'm an acoustic player. Mm. So eventually, I'd like to do that. Have, yeah, have a, man. a line of acoustic instruments. Oh, yeah. so cool. <laughs> oh, Hey guys, that was part one. Hope you enjoyed. Stay tuned because after I finished chatting to you, there was a crazy little outro that we did with JD Custom. Also, next video is going to be about the technical aspects of Luthery challenging repair jobs and you'll also be giving advice to people who want to get into this line of work and play. Like, subscribe and comment. Check you next time.